Hello, everyone. Welcome to chapter four. So in this chapter, we'll be looking from sections 4.1 to 4.4. So we'll be looking into moment of force in scalar formulation. Then we'll be looking to cross product. Then we'll look into the vector formulation. And then we will look into the principle of moments. So from this objective, the students will be understand, able to understand and define what is moment and determine the moments of a force in 2D and 3D cases. So the first section is moment of a force in scalar formulation. So what is moment? So basically the moment is the tendency a force to rotate an object about a point that is not on the line of the action. Sometimes we call it as torque. So let's have a trench and bolt over here. So we apply a force F in the trench. So the force is in a distance of D. So because of that, we are applying in a direction, we'll be creating a moment on the bolt. So let's look into the line of action. So what is line of action is the line where your force is acting. For the force shown here, so this is the line of action. So the, through which line your force is going to be acting. So in 2D case, the magnitude of the moment is defined as your force, where the force is acting and the distance between your the point O where the force is applied and your line of action, which is D naught over here. So that's my magnitude because this is 2D, we look into the magnitude. So, so the unit of this is going to be the force times the distance. So that's Newton meter or pounds feet. Okay. So the direction of moment, for example, let's say the moment is equal to force times the distance and the distance direction is counterclockwise. So often it is easy to determine the moment by using components of F. So how we give the components. So for example, if my force is the line of action is like that, and that is my origin. So I wanted to get the perpendicular distance, but some of the cases it's okay, we can get the perpendicular distance easily, but some cases, if the forces are inclined, it's very hard to get the moment. So those cases, we get the component. So we get the component in X and Y, and then we get the moment for Y and X separately. So for X and for Y, and the resultant is going to be F. So we know that moment is equals to Fy times A minus Fy B, B because first my force is over here. So the distance is going to be, so that's my line of action. So this distance is A, so that's Fy A. And now let's look into the direction it's going to be turning this object. So that's my O. And if I leave this one over here, so, and only my F is applying. So this is going to be up rotating in counterclockwise. So that's why it's positive. Let's see the X. So X line of action is this, the perpendicular distance from O and X is B. So that's my B. So the direction, so if I only apply F, so it's going to be falling like that. So that's going to be in clockwise. So that's why I have a negative over here. So this is how we give the moment. So the typical sign conversion for a 2D moment is that counterclockwise is always considered to be positive. So determine the direction of rotation by imagining the body is pin at O and you are deciding which way the body would rotate because of only of that force acting on that. For example, what happened when it only Fy acts, what happened on the Fx acts. So, but let's look into this case. So what if there is no moment from X? So then your moment is only going to be through your Fy. So the resultant for 2D problem, where are all the forces, they lie in the XY plane. The resultant moment about the point O can be determined by finding the algebraic sum of all the individual forces. For example, if I want to find the total moment acting on this point, I get the addition of M01, 2, and 3 because of these forces F1 and F2. So the moment resultant is going to be the summation of all the forces and the duration. So make sure to have the directions very carefully because of, of MRO, first let's of F1. So let's see the distance is D1 is given. So how it's going to rotate? It's going to rotate in anti-clockwise. So that's positive. Let's look into the F2. So F2, if I push only with that, it's going to act in clockwise. So that's negative. And F3, if I leave that, it's going to rotate like that. That's going to be a counterclockwise. So that's my result. 
So applications, for example, we have a beam AB. So beams are often used to bridge gaps in walls. So we had to know what the effect of the force the beam will have on the support of the beam. So what do you think what will happen at points A and B? So A and B, it's supported. So we have a force F acting on that. So if I know at A, there's going to be a moment creating in the clockwise direction because of the force F and the distance. The same thing will be happening on B and that moments will be balanced to keep the force in equilibrium. So let's do a simple example. So I asked to find out the moment of the force about the point O. So here we have a 100 Newton and distance, perpendicular distance, how the distance is assumed is the line of action and the point. So what's the perpendicular distance? So that's two meter. So simply the moment is 100 times two, that's 200 Newton meter. Don't forget the units, it's very important. Example two, you're asked to find a moment of the force about O. So let's look at the point O, okay, O is here and the force is here. So the tricky part is how do you find the perpendicular distance? For that first, get the line of action. So my, sorry about that, line of action is going to be that. And that's my O. If I draw a perpendicular line, what's the distance? So that's four meter. So I'll be using only my four meters. So that's the seven times Total distance is four, so I have only need that distance. So that's a four minus one, that is three. So that's my moment. Okay. So in moment, we'll be looking into vector cross product. So we'd look into the dot product previously to find angles between two forces. Here we are looking into vector cross product. So why do we need that? So for, for sorry, while finding the moment of a force in 2D, is straightforward when you know the perpendicular distance, right? But finding the perpendicular distance can be hard, especially when you are dealing in three dimensions. So it's very hard for you to see what is the perpendicular distance. So a more general approach to find the moment of a force, it exists. So this more general approach is usually used when dealing with three dimensional forces, but can be used in the two dimensional case also. So this more general method of finding the moment of a force uses a vector operation, which is called as cross product of two vectors. So we'll be looking into what is cross product. So again, we're going to see a force A and B. So I wanted to find out the moment because of this force A and B. So what I do is, first I draw a parallel line to A and B. And I get that area. So I get the plane where my A and B two four vectors, which I need to get the moment is acting. Mm -hmm. So I draw a unit vector acting in the perpendicular direction of my area. So that's my C, which is acting in the U, in the perpendicular direction, having a unit vector. So I find the vector which is going to be acting perpendicular to my surface. So that vector will have a unit vector C. So in this case, I can denote the cross product of my two vectors in terms of A cross product of B into sine theta. So what's the direction? The direction of the cross product is going to be the direction in the unit vector. Previously, we looked for dot product. We didn't have any units, but here we have a unit. So let's see whether it follows the rule. So we have a commutative law. It's not commutative because A cross product B is not going to be a B cross product A. So that's not correct. Instead, it's just going to change the direction of your force which it is acting. And then the scalar multiplication, it's going to be obeying. So we can multiply by scalars into dot product then it is associative and vector multiplication, it's also distributed law also satisfied. So let's look into the vector uh, Cartesian, vector, sorry, Cartesian vector formulation. So we say that if I want to consider two vectors, the perpendicular one, it's going to be unit vector. So let's look into my 3D plane where I have Y and X and Z. So I know the unit vectors. So let's see, I'm going to get the, you need cross product of the unit vectors i and g. So first what I do, I get the area and get what is perpendicular to that. Obviously it's my k, that's the z. So dot product, cross product of i, j, k is going to be my k, that's the unit vector. Same thing if I want to get i cross product of k, 
that is i and k. So that's going to be this, thus minus j. Why is that? Because the direction is going to be clockwise. So I'm going from i to k. So i to k moving is clockwise. So that's why it's negative. What happens if I'm going from i and i? So sine theta is zero is zero. So that's what here. So if I go into go for like, uh, let's say k to j. So that's again, um, negative so that's negative because it's k the perpendicular one is i if i'm going to from if i'm going from uh, j to k it's going to be the other direction so that's positive i that's why we said it doesn't follow the multiplication law okay so we have the cartesian vector formulation how the all the things looks so we can get similar to dot product we can get we can multiply them and we can eliminate this and the final answer is going to be a very big answer and we substitute and this we simplify that as all the y x y y z component x y and x e and c all these components we have got the cross product so since it's very hard for you to remember so the simple way to do is using determinant so what is determinant you go back to your vectors so for example how do we get the magnitude of determinant so if i want to get the determinant for element i i get the element i out and then I cross this one and get the cross multiplication and get that. If I get into for element J, I cross that and get the cross multiplication. So similarly, you can move on to that. So moments in 3D, it can be calculated using scalar approach, but it can be difficult and time consuming. So we use cross product. So we have the moment and we get the cross product. So we get the position vector, then we get the force. So we use the cross product and we get it. So how do we, the cross product format is going to be your ij case. First you have position vector and then you have your force vectors. So then you get your final answer. So when we do a problem, it might be easy. So this is going to be a scalar approach because 2D is a simple one. So we have a hundred Newton acting that asked to find the moment. So what is our plan? We resolve the force into two because it's technically very hard for you to go and find what is the perpendicular distance. So Basically, it's better to do in X and Y direction because that's the distance is given. So you just find the moment. So let's get the component. So X and Y component. So minus 100, 3 by 5, 100, 4 by 5 in the X direction. My distance for the vertical component, my distance is going to be. So my vertical component, I draw the line of action, my perpendicular distance, 5. For my horizontal component, I draw the line of action. My distance is going to be 2. So I get my force um, moment and I look the direction and I get it 460 in the clockwise direction. Let's look at this example. So this is going to be vector. So we have F1 and F2 forces is given. You are asked to find the resultant moment. So first I find the resultant of F1 and F2. Then I get the position vector from O to A. Directly I can get the position vector because it's four, five, and then you can get it. Then I determine the so let's do that. F1 and F2, I get the resultant and my position vector I get from OA. Then I get my determinant. So I have I, J, K, and then, so I keep I and then I get the multiplication. So that's what we have here. And don't forget your I and J and K components. So go through it by yourself, try to solve it by yourself, then you'll be clear about that. Okay, so. That's all with the lecture. So we'll look at, we'll meet at the next lecture.